Good morning, Asphalt Life community, and good morning to our Atlas contractors. So glad to have you with us in this beautiful day of April um, for our podcast, or excuse me, our webinar. You guys, I just finished a new podcast episode, and I am like so psyched about the Asphalt Life podcast community. If you have not checked that out, be sure to do so. Um, I see a ton of you guys are currently getting on and into the queue for this awesome webinar today where we're talking about Facebook advertising. It's a deep dive. So we are going to get right to the guts of how to set up a campaign, how to set up ads, how to retarget folks, how to really maximize um, your online presence on Facebook. And we have the best of the best um, with us today with Bill Combs from No Time for Social. Hey, Bill. Good morning. Happy to be here today. Yeah, we're so excited to have you on. I think this topic is obviously resonating with a lot of our contractor and contracting community out there. So excited to get into this topic. Yeah, me too. It's a uh... It's it's complex, but uh, certainly I've uh, got a lot of lot of things to talk about today, and hopefully we'll get some good questions in that will uh, uh, help help uh, answer some of the questions from the contractors out there. For sure. So if you are currently listening to us live, that's awesome. So glad that you're on. You cannot talk to us um, verbally through the phone. However, we do have the chat. So um, if you're on chat and you can hear us, there's a chat box in there. Go ahead and give us a good morning So and let us know that you can hear us loud and clear. Um, if you're on a mobile phone, you can also see, or on your iPad, you can also see in the bottom right corner, there's this opportunity that we love. It's called hearts on the bottom right. Give us a couple of hearts, man. If you like what you're hearing today and you're feeling this conversation, go ahead and give us some some hearts and let us know that you can. Hey, Raphael, good morning. Alicia, good morning. Hey, Danielle, good morning. Glad you guys are on. So good. Hey, Portsmouth, nice. Glad to see you're on this morning. Yeah, so um, excited to see all of you all on and, and we constantly have a lot of people pouring into the queue this morning to jump in and hear about um, Facebook advertising and really how to maximize and leverage your ads. Um, just to give you guys a reminder, we always love feedback. We really want to hear from you and hear what's going on um, in your market, what you want to hear about. It's a busy, busy season and we, got, we are wishing you all all the best um, for your upcoming busy roofing season. If you're not busy yet, then hopefully this webinar will help you get busy, get some hot leads in, but I'm going to send in here um, a chat now to all of everyone in our listening community. We want your feedback. We want to know what you thought and also to send additional questions um, after the webinar is over. Click on this link that's in the chat and you can actually go there. What you'll see is a brief survey um, for the webinar that we're going to do today. So give us your comments, give us your feedback. And then um, our last question is, what other topics would you like to see? Um, when you keep scrolling, uh, just to give you guys a little bit of a teaser of what we have planned for May, um, May is going to be a month where you guys are implementing a lot of um, effort with your sales team. And so we're going to talk about the essentials of hiring, training, and building a great sales team with the man, Jim Johnson. If you guys haven't checked out oh, any nice. of Jim's um, content, right? It's awesome. Um, he's got a lot of really great content out there for contractors on building a successful roofing company and a successful business. So be sure to check that out on the atlasroofing.com forward slash atlas webinar. You can jump in there, give some feedback for this webinar, as well as register for next month's um, webinar, which we're super excited about. So lots of people pouring into the queue and um, feel free to give us some questions. Let us know that you're here and that you can hear us. Good morning. Hey, Shauna. Good morning. If you're just jumping in, glad you're with us. This is Tiara from Atlas and um, I have Bill Combs on the line from No Time for Social and I'm um, super excited that you guys are 
with us this morning. Hey, Kathleen. Good morning. Good morning, Christina. Thanks, guys, for giving, letting us know that you can hear us. Awesome. So just while we have a couple of minutes, what I want to know is how many of you guys already have an active ads on Facebook? How many of you guys are already running some stuff on Facebook? Yes. That's a great leading question. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of you guys are. Danielle is, Christina, you are. Yep. Lori, great. So if you're currently running ads, you know, and obviously you're on here because you want to know how to do it better, right? How to really leverage um, your Facebook marketing and how to retarget. So I think this is a great topic for um, discussion today. And we definitely want to hear your feedback. You know, I think one of the biggest things um, in Facebook is that your contractors, I tell people all over the country, you know, if you're not currently utilizing social media, you're missing a big opportunity because word of mouth is now social media, right? It's where so people um, share their thoughts, their ideas, they share all their best selfies. It's all right there on Facebook. And so you have a great opportunity to literally um, engage with a community for a potential customer and so there's a lot of really great opportunities for for leveraging that and how to really target through an ad campaign so super excited that you guys are on be sure to continue to keep the questions coming in throughout the um webinar if you have anything that's burning feel free to pop it in and we definitely will be monitoring those to answer those but let's go ahead and get started so today, let's talk about the agenda. So we are going to be going through a lot of really important content today. And today, the intention is to do a deep dive. So I'm glad that a lot of you guys are already actively starting your campaigns and actively putting out Facebook ads. I think a lot of you guys are going to learn a lot of things from Bill. Um, but let's talk about the, the first steps of, of of building that customer acquisition funnel and then getting actually getting your campaigns and your business manager account set up why you need a business manager account versus a typical manager ads account um, then we'll get into the facebook ads the different types of ads that you can run um, and then setting up the custom audience within that that that's a very important segment that i think you know, separates what boosting is from actually setting up an audience. It's a very different world and very important when you're looking at actually running ad campaigns on Facebook. Um, next, we'll talk about next steps for your business success and then digital marketing team audit. Hmm. So that's a really um, challenging question, right? You think you, you have your digital team and you yourself and you, but what things are you missing, right? What things do you need to go back to your team or if you're, you know, leading your your company and you're the one putting up the Facebook ads, what assets do you really need to consider um, when you're out there building this business on social media? So great agenda ahead. And um, next I want to introduce Bill. So Bill Combs, it founded Hellwatch, or as some of us know it as Anything Weather back in 1995, very established. And then um, after building Hellwatch, he was able to grow the company to 2.3 million in revenue by 2011. After that, in 2012, he founded UAS. RC, which Bill, what does that stand for? <laughs> so the UASRC was a uh, an organization that was built by uh, several roofing companies back in 2012. It stands for the United Association of Storm Restoration Contractors, yeah. and I believe it is still in existence today. Uh, I was with it for about a year and a half, almost two years, and then. Okay. Uh, while working on UASRC, I also started getting more active into social media, really based off of my work with Hailwatch. 
Gotcha. So then after founding that in 2014, Bill um, founded uh, No Time for Social, which is uh, his company now. And he's the, also the co-founder of the Catalyst Group, um, which launched in um, 2018. If you have not or are not familiar with the Catalyst Group, it's an awesome organization that their whole goal and mantra is to educate contractors to make sure that they're building their businesses the right way and building a healthy foundation for their business. And so Atlas is proud to be a sponsor for the Catalyst Group and um, partner with great companies like No Time for Social and Contractor Coach Pro and the list goes on and on, Bill. So kudos yeah. to you for just, you know, really caring about the contracting community and really putting forth such a strong effort as we can see here in your background to really make sure that this is, is, is something close to your heart and making sure that it's built right. So thank you it for is. all you've done. Appreciate it. And thank you, Atlas, for coming in um, and, and supporting the organization. Um, you know, the, the difference really between, I think, the UASRC, which I helped found in 2012, and the Catalyst Group is, the Catalyst Group is a is a vendor alliance, so we're looking for best in breed, and we've got two to three best in breed of each of the different segments out there. So whether it's mm -hmm. single manufacturers or suppliers or you know supplementing groups, websites, marketing like myself, uh, uh, I know you had Greg Hoffman on, another Catalyst Group member, talking about Google and websites a couple maybe a couple months ago. So we really, really are focused on the contractor and, and making sure that we can provide these crazy solutions that are out there and, and help guide them along. So it's great to be involved in that and uh, look forward to the great things to come in 2019 and beyond with that group. For sure. So Bill, take us um, further. Let's talk about Facebook advertising and and, sure. and what what is, you know, building our community and and the new customer acquisition acquisition excuse me funnel. Yeah, so to to jump right into it, um the really I think what we're seeing now with digital marketing is it's it's really expanded out and become a lot more of a complex process than most people even want to deal with. So we are a digital marketer certified partner and we're also really basing all of our uh, work now with clients on a funnel process. So whether that's top of funnel, middle funnel, bottom funnel, which is what you're seeing here, there are very complex processes involved in order to guide a potential customer from the start of learning about your company to becoming that customer. So you know, for, for this particular example, right, uh, we have an awareness phase where we're running ads to brand new social audiences. We've got maybe a CRM with a bunch of leads in it that we potentially could use to run some ads, whether, you know, they may be leads that haven't converted yet. Uh, you guys may have canvassers out there that are logging information that potentially could be used for these brand awareness ads. So, we take these initial audiences and we run these ads to them. And, and geographically, we're targeting people, but we're also targeting people based on the data that we have available. So there may be multiple ads that are run to multiple, multiple audiences. So what do those brand awareness ads look like? Uh, that could be a video. So you may have video testimonials of prior customers. You may have before and after pictures, maybe in a picture collage. Uh, you, we, may, we may have... Uh, ads that that prompt people to go visit your website we may have ads that prompt people to visit a landing page a specific landing page right so we're basically starting out this process of beginning to get that potential customer to engage with your content uh, we like to say you know nobody's sitting around on facebook waiting to go buy a roof and no one's going to click a button and buy a roof so there's there's certain processes and things that you have to have in place in order to get that customer through this funnel process. So the second piece is what we would call the middle of the funnel, which is um, these retargeting ads, right? So in that case, they may have engaged with a video, they may have visited a website, or we've now, we've now uh, added them to a website custom audience, they may have engaged with the page. Now we're gonna run additional ads to that particular customer base. 
So now it's website blogs, top 10 tips to keep your, if you're in the north, to keep your, you know, ice dams away from your roof. Uh, top 10 tips to, you know, uh, plan your roof for the springtime or severe weather. Uh, there may be guides that are downloadable, right? So that downloadable guide is gated content where we're asking that customer for, or potential customer for a name, an email, a phone number. Uh, they, may, they may subscribe to a newsletter. So those are sort of that secondary push where the users have experienced at least one ad and now they're being pushed down this funnel. And then the next is the conversion stage. So in that case, we want them to take an action, right? So whether that's clicking on an ad where they're, uh, where they're submitting their information and we're gonna look at one of those ads, uh, it's called a lead ad, uh, the, the inspection call to action, if it's a storm related type ad uh, or an email follow up. And that is, that's sort of that, that funnel process. And, and all of these things have intricate pieces to them, right? If we're making a video, we've got to make sure the video looks right. If we're having people visit the website, make sure your website is up to the speed, especially mobile friendly. Um, if they're engaging with pages on that top of funnel, right? Uh, how does that landing page look and what does it look like? And is it, is it uh, you know, uh, an acceptable landing page? So all of these processes are, are things that are needed in order to have a successful digital marketing process in place. It's yeah, super yeah. complicated, but you can, you can do it if you put your mind to it. So um, I think that's, that's a really good kind of outline of, and this is a funnel that we use for one of our clients. So uh, it's, it's real, real life stuff that we're doing. Yeah, I love that. So lots, lots of different ways to, you know, really there is a strategy to getting a lead, which is, I think, you know, the biggest thing that you're saying here, there's definitely work and, and that's put goals into creating that customer acquisition funnel. It's not as easy as perhaps just setting up a random ad, right? Yeah. Or boosting a post, which is what we've seen in the past, right? I spent a thousand dollars on a boost post and nothing happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotcha. So, so what is the next step to actually creating, once we have this funnel correct, what is the next sure. step to kind of creating our ad campaign? Yeah. So one of the, one of the things I want to focus on with, with this particular webinar is going to be, um, is going to be business manager and then also the targeting. So you have actually a screenshot here of your page where normally somebody would go in and they would have an ad account. So, yep. and they would go into their ad account by just clicking on manage ads. So you're clicking on that, that top right drop down. you go to manage ads and you're in your ad manager. Um, one thing that has been put in place, and I don't know if it's been put in place for everybody, but the, Facebook is moving in this direction. So if you have not set up Facebook Business Manager, which is at business.facebook.com, eventually you're going to need to move your ad account if you're a business into that into that portal, that, that business portal, in order to use your custom audiences. So mm -hmm. Facebook is really getting diligent about making sure that they've got checks and balances in place in, in, in order to make sure that data is used properly. And we've seen the whole, you know, scams and all the different things with the elections and everything. So they've, they've been really diligent about making that happen. So if you are gonna use a custom audience using name, email, phone number, we're gonna see a couple of, we're gonna see an example of that later. You will, you will most likely at some point need to put your, your, ad, your ad account and then even your page into business manager. And it's, it's, a, it, it's, it's an easy thing to do, but then there's the, always the little tiny complicated things that can come along with that. So uh, my suggestion would be move into business manager, going to business.facebook.com and, and moving your ad account and, uh, and your page into business manager. Yep. So, so a couple of questions there, Bill, as it relates to that. So a lot of you guys on here are currently setting up your ads through this manage ads button. So you need to go into the business.facebook.com that's in the chat and actually set up a business account. So that way you can really maximize um, all of, all of the, uh, what would you call it? I guess. Of, of all of available tools, all yeah. the available, really the best of the best marketing tools 
to okay. utilize the Facebook platform for your business are going to be located in Business Manager. Okay, great. So, so do that, and then you can certainly merge your current ad account with this ad, ad space here. So, Co correct. Um, okay, great. And this is, you know, the next slide, and we just popped into it, is is what it looks like when you get into Business Manager. And we're only really going to touch on a couple of these today. Honestly, there's there's thousands and thousands of hours of training that is out there through YouTube. Some of it is a little sketchy. Uh, even Facebook has one called Blueprint. So if you went to facebook.com forward slash Blueprint, they have their own training. I think it's now run through Business Manager. But uh, we're going to touch on a couple things today, which is uh, you're able to look at audience insights, ads manager is going to be in business manager. So I've got that highlighted. The pixels. So the pixel is the code that you're going to add to your site in order to retarget people. Uh, mm -hmm. So a pixel is used uh, if, if you've spent a lot of time on Facebook and you're scrolling through your phone and let's say you uh, let's say you're on your desktop and you hit Home Depot or you hit JCPenney or any of these different companies out there. I, I was just on Under Armour's website looking at uh, sneakers for my kid and I've got it. I've got an ad for the exact model of sneakers showing up in my feed. It's shown up multiple times. So that's what the retargeting pixel does. There's a very complex process behind that. But but then there's the very simple process of, I just want to be able to run ads to people that have hit my website. And that is what the pixel does. Uh, audiences is what we're really going to take a deep dive into today. And then business settings is where you'll set up all of your business manager type uh, things having to do with business manager credentialing, basically. And that's adding people, looking at your ad accounts. And that's what we're going to look at on the next slide. So, so just to add, when for you guys that are asking on here, you can actually go in Ad Manager in your current account, and it's so it's very similar to what Bill's showing here. So just jump in there and kind of follow along. If you don't have your Business Manager set up, just still follow along because the process um, for some of these attributes are still in the regular one. But you'll just know after the call to certainly sign up as a business Facebook ad manager. Correct, correct. Okay. And we don't, on the left side, I've got audience insights highlighted, but that's actually not one we're going to go into. That's actually a little portal that is pretty cool to use. And, and I, I bring that up because you can look at things in your community. So when you click on audience insights, for example, I'm in Round Rock, Texas, I could put in Round Rock and see what, how many ads people click on and, and what different types of things they like. So there's a lot of really good data involved in that, but the other four we're going to look at and we'll pop right. over to the next slide now and whoops, let me make sure I'm going to that. Okay. And, and begin to look at what, what you see when you go into business settings. So we, we looked at, let me pop back real quick on the right hand side, we had business settings. When you click on business settings, this is what you're going to see. So you can now manage people. Uh, I've got people pages and ad accounts highlighted with the arrow. Those are the three things that I think are going to be the most interesting to everybody on this webinar today in the simplest way. I do have some of our clients kind of blocked out, but I've got a couple of them just so you can see what it looks like when you have a specific page in Business Manager. So for most companies, it's going to be your roofing company in there unless you've got multiple pages. Uh, so And you can add those pages by just clicking on add on the top and requesting access to the page. So everything's based on credentials. Uh, so people allows you to manage the people in your business manager. Pages allows you to manage pages and ad accounts allows you to manage ad accounts. Um, obviously, you can see there's a wealth of additional things on this screen. Instagram accounts, uh, projects, data sources. Uh, brand safety. There's all kinds of different things. And this does continue to evolve over time. Payments is going to be important, right? That's where you add in your credit card for making payments on your account. And for, for companies that work with us, right? So when we work with a roofing company, we request access to their page. We request access to their ad account and everything is run through our no time for social business manager. So it's sort of this portal for access and information. And it's it's really a they've done a really, really good job over the past two years of getting this to the point where it's it's somewhat user friendly. Um, there's still some challenges with it, but 
Um, I think if you go in there and you're using people pages and ad accounts, you're in good shape and then begin to expand out and look at other things. So I think that covers business manager. Any questions on your end, Tiara? Not yet. All right, great. Well, now we're gonna we're gonna kind of go in a different direction. Now um, we're gonna we're gonna start looking at some ads. So we're gonna go through ads, and then we're gonna go through audiences. And and these are two, I think, critical things for any company. Uh, so popping into ads, I like to use some examples of very successful ads we've had. Uh, the first one is balance claims. And you see this ad was was actually the date on this ad is September 2017th of 2016. Uh, the reason I like to bring this one up is first off, it's still an ad that's running now. The reason that uh, I had to, I, I we've actually changed the ad because balance claims, who is a Troy Clymer from balance is another one of the co-founders of the Catalyst Group. Great company, uh, great team over there. Uh, so this ad would actually target roofing companies or people involved in roofing. And, and we have this as a case study on our page where we generated about 700 leads. When the person clicks learn more, it actually generated a lead for them. And we're going to look at a specific example of that uh, in a little bit. Uh, we were able to generate about 700 leads and over a million dollars in business for balance claims by running this ad to roofers. So the simplicity of it, right? We look at the graphic, more roofs, greater profitability, the balance difference, balance claims. Uh, we, we look at the text on the top, right? What, would you, what could you do if you could maximize profits on every claim? When this ad shows up in the feed of the people that we're targeting, it sort of hits them pretty quick, right? Like who doesn't want to maximize profits? Mm -hmm. um, sort of that little catchphrase, supplements hitting you by storm. So a yeah. couple things, and, and we've actually had to change up this, this ad a little bit uh, based on some things that are going on in the industry, but it's still, it's still a working ad and it still actually is, is a, a very a good ad. And you can see it's got 504 likes. Uh, it had 26 comments hey, and 79 Bill? shares. Yes. Hey. I'm, I'm I'm just cutting you off just because no, it's okay. some, some folks are saying that they can't hear. If you guys can hear us, oh. then give us a chat. I just want to make sure everyone can hear before we move on. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm, can you okay. hear me okay? I can hear you good. Okay. Okay, perfect. So most of you guys can hear. If you can't hear, um, you won't be able to hear me saying this either. But <laughs> Um, okay, so most people can hear, so we're okay. going to move on. Yeah, so, usually, uh, potentially, that might be an internet connection on there. Internet connection. <laughs> I just want to make sure because I got okay. a couple of those. All right. Got it. So, so, yeah, but I think this is a perfect note. And also, you know, what are your recommendations for visually? I mean, for, for contractors yeah. trying to reach homeowners, what is the best, you know, call yep. to action or... Yeah, so let's bring up the second ad. So that's our net construction and roofing based out of uh, uh, the northern Indiana area. It's a sponsored ad. Uh, my, my recommendations, this is actually a drone video. So it would play as a drone video up, up and away, get a bird's eye view of some of the technicians bringing this damaged roof back to tip top shape, right? So <clears throat> this this actually would run to an area that was affected, I think, by a windstorm up in that part of the area. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in that yeah. case, we're we're getting people clicking on learn more. We don't actually see the clicks, but we know that the ad worked. Right. And also for contractors, you know, if you're selling Atlas shingles with Scotchgard, a before and after of a really streaked up roof with oh, a nice yeah. clean roof would be an awesome image to pop in and say, you know, never have this problem again, or we're helping fi we're helping fix your local streaking problem. Run an ad like that in a market that you're in, and and you know we've seen a lot of um, feedback, a positive feedback from those kind of ads of actual before and afters of jobs that you've done promoting that you promote, you know, install Atlas shingles. So I, I love the before and after. That's that's a, another great way to to market. I would say um, one other thing that I see consistently is way way too much text. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say 85% of all 
content and ads, and, and it's probably going up now, is, is being viewed on mobile. Uh, anything past that bottom line of services, if we kept going on and saying, you know, we're a great company, we've helped out, anything past that is going to have the sort of the truncated version, meaning you're going to have to click in order to read the rest. Nobody's okay. doing that, right? So you want the video to play, you want your message to be clean and clear and crisp, three lines at most. Uh, sort of that secondary piece on the bottom where you've got the name of the company and then the call to action, right? So um, contact us today to learn more, the secondary learn more. So it sort of gives you this, this very simple way to market and not overcomplicate it. Do you recommend having, when they're setting up the ad, do you recommend having in the text what the call to action is or is the learn more at the bottom? enough should they have contact us should they be poignant about having that in the communication of the text i i traditionally do like to include that in the text because if yeah. somebody's if some the the eyes are going to start from the top right so oftentimes the eyes will start at the top of a you know if there's if a consumer is scrolling through right and all you were able to catch their attention and they stopped their feed and they said okay i've got this video this looks really cool and interesting they're going to start reading and they're going to read through as the video is playing and then they're going to know what they need to do in order to take the next step so we usually do put a call to action in the text um, we're going to pop up a couple other ads here in a second and we'll take a look at the other two that we've we've run um, and, I, and and i may be surprised too that we don't have it in there but we're going to take a look so let me yeah. let me actually pop over to the to the next two ads so um, yeah, so in this case, we're doing a uh, Scott Feller from Feller uh, Kangaroo from Austin uh, was running a no roof left behind. So in this case, we do have the call to action in there, right? So vote for your favorite finalist to get a new no, new roof at no cost until December 16th. So in that case, we're asking them for vote and clicking on the either the learn more or anywhere in that link would have brought them to that call to action. Yeah. Same thing with re-roof. Uh, you know, uh, contact us today in the text and then with a bit.ly link where they can contact to get uh, from military members. So I think the, I think a, a lot of times what I've seen is uh, an overcomplication of text and, and not quality controlling the text in that ad. And then obviously what we're going to go into next is uh, or coming up here is the targeting. And I think the targeting is something that um, I've seen ads for roofers in other states in Austin. In fact, we're going to look at one next. <laughs> well, <laughs> so. yeah, and I, I just wanted to add, you know, when you're setting up your social post for advertising, be sure, you know, to leverage. Back in the last slide, I don't know if you guys noticed the one with Premier, um, um, with Balance on there. You know, on the left, Bill actually had in caps, learn more. You know, yep. so so capitalize the call to action word vote could be all caps, you know, sure. you know, whatever that call to action that you're looking for, leverage that and then have it be short and sweet and to the point, like right out before you post it on a piece of paper or on your email, you know, what you want to post and then go through there and see the how many words you can delete with saying the same thing. So yep. I think it is, you know minimizing the characters making sure that you capitalize the call to action and that there is an actual call to action in the header as well as having that learn more button within your ad so be sure that you're utilizing that plus your video your before and afters to really drive home the point you're trying to get the homeowner to see it's a great point and there really is a science behind ads right i mean you've got large companies like coke and you know bud mm -hmm. light those guys they have data scientists and scientists looking at text and ads and what to say and how to say it. So um, I, I often think Facebook makes it so easy to boost a post that it's sort of the wild west where, you know, they, they will show you your own post in your feed and say, you yeah. can boost this post now to reach 5,000 people for $200 and people will do it because they they get excited about 5000 people seeing their content but the content's bad the ad co the the copy of that post may be relevant for like a normal post on the page but not necessarily relevant for an ad 
So I think people will often spend money and get a little bit, you know, nervous and sometimes upset because nothing happened, but there's no call to action. They're just boosting a post and it's really awareness at that point, but there's no call to action. Or or call to action. And then the other thing I would say, Bill, to piggyback on that is, you know, we got to make sure that within the post it's targeted correctly. And I think that's what you're going to talk about next. It is. It is. Before we go into that, though, we're going to look at some bad ads. <laughs> so this this is actually the example that I was just mentioning. Um, so this ad came up in my feed, uh, in, and I'm in Round Rock, Texas. It's a sponsored <laughs> ad, so you could see on the left-hand side. We'll go from left to right here. So on the left-hand side, you'll see it says sponsored. Uh, if you live in the Orlando metro, you need your roof inspected ASAP. Uh, And then you can see the name of the company and a date and then national leader in insurance, rest store, dot, 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 continue reading. Uh, I didn't realize this until I clicked on continue reading that they just took a press release that they put out and put it as a post. And then I believe may have boosted the post to everybody that liked their page. Um, I won't mention the name of the company, but I do, I believe I do like their page. So it's talking to people that are supposed to be in the Orlando, Florida metro area, but you can see that, you know, we go from sponsored posts to continue reading to press release all the way over to my comment, which says, I'm in Round Rock, Texas. You should fix your ad audience targeting. And then you also see I'm in Delaware, Somebody else posted their their (laughs) click to their Mason company. There ended up being about five or six other comments. And then I believe they ended up taking it down or it may have run out of boost post money. So they may have just hit boost post to put a hundred bucks behind it. But this is an example of, of really sort of a waste of money, right? I mean, there's no need at all in an ad to, to put a press release copy and paste. There was, it's, it's poorly done. And I, I, I feel bad for companies that go out there and they continually do this. And I, and I see this a lot. It's unfortunate, but it, it does happen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's, if you're on the call, don't, don't do this. Right? <laughs> don't boost press releases. Yeah. So that's an example of a bad ad. I don't want to harp on it too long, but let's, let's look at what would happen if you ran a good lead ad. So this would be sort of an example of a bottom of funnel, although I think we ran this directly as a call to action lead ad. So the cool thing about this ad is, again, it goes back to the simplicity of it. Uh, This is actually for Green River, Wyoming. Uh, There was a hailstorm there a couple of years ago. I just use this as an example because it's been a good ad for us and uh, and it's a good example. So uh, it speaks to a couple of things. One is homeowners in Green River. So it's speaking to the person that's looking at the ad and they're going to look at it and go, because the targeting's right, I'm in Green River. What is the next thing? Get your roof replaced before winter starts by the only Owens Corning Platinum Preferred Contractor in your area. Now I know we've got Atlas hosting this webinar, but for for sample sakes, they're an OCE Preferred Contractor. Um, Your roof may have been damaged by summer hailstorms. And then going back to what Tiara said, click learn more to schedule your free inspection. The the cool thing about this is the the hail stops the person from going through their feed, right? They're going to, oh, wow, there's hail. Wait a minute. I'm in Green River. I can get a free inspection. And then the bottom part of that ad is the secondary sort of call to action, which is free roof inspections before winter hits. Click learn more. So this ad sort of encompasses everything that needs to be done right on an ad. Mm Mm-hmm. When the homeowner click learn more, and I believe we spent about, I think we spent about $1,000 to $1,200, and I believe we got about 60 leads out of this particular uh, this particular ad. But when they click learn more, what happens? While they're on their cell phone and they click learn more, this is a lead ad campaign. So this information would pop up on the individual's phone it would automatically put name, email, and phone number. So there's a little risk here, right? I've, I've got my information in there just for the sake of this ad, but if I was in Green River it would, and I was a homeowner, it would have bring, brought this information up and it would pre-fill this information. A uh, couple things on this, and I don't wanna to spend too much time on it because I know we've got some other things to get into, but you can add in other fields. So you could ask for address if you wanted to. 
if you ask for more than four fields, I think there is a decrease, science-based decrease in whether people would submit their information. Uh, and the other thing is this information, because it's pre-filled, could be old information. So the potential risk is there that you would get some leads that may not be 100% certain. But the ad itself is really good copy. And if you're running that type of copy and that type of ad, uh, more often than not, you'll hopefully see success as long as you're using some type of funnel process. This would really be bottom of funnel, meaning you're asking for that lead after they saw an ad, after they saw some cool before and after Atlas photos of different jobs you've done, so on and so forth. So yeah. that's an example of a lead ad, and it, and it could be a really useful tool if used correctly. Yeah. So, I mean, contractors that are on this call, when you're looking to try to get leads, right there in Facebook without having to actually acquire the lead outside or on your website. They don't have to go any further than that social media post. They click learn more or or contact us today and then mm -hmm. that information pops up. So this is a huge lead generator. So if you're looking for an ad, try out the Facebook lead ads because it's gonna help you to actually get live leads right there in the Facebook community and for a homeowner they feel more secure because it's already safe it's already within their Facebook community and they have the choice to submit their contact information so that's Correct. somebody that's really interested in getting you know some information from you so yep I love that Bill. Great. all right so now we're going to pop into Facebook custom audiences. Um, when when we when we looked at the initial business manager page, there was a link for audiences, and that's where all of this information is housed within business manager. Um, this is really where what we like to say all the magic happens. <clears throat> you have various ways to create custom audiences. You can use the Facebook pixel, you can use customer files, you can use engagement. We're gonna really look at the top two and the bottom one today. Uh, you can upload your customer files to try to target them specifically. You can install that Facebook pixel on your website to capture audiences. All of this does take time to implement and it also will take you time to build the traffic. So if you install the website custom pixel, you, the Facebook pixel, you need time for people to go to your website to get put into that little, that, that bucket of people to retarget. So it's not an overnight process. In some cases, it takes us six, eight months, sometimes a year to get all of these things implemented for the clients that we work with. But yeah. over time, it absolutely is worth it. So we're going to look at a, a, a couple of those now. We're going to start out with the top one. Uh, customer file. So what could you do with your customer data? So you could use a CSV or text file, uh, most likely a CSV file. So if you are in this portal and you clicked on customer file, this is what would come up next. You're going to add a customer list. There's a bunch of different unique identifiers. The most common ones we use though are email, phone, first name, last name, zip code, and city. So if you had all of that data, let's say you're a roofing company in Dallas and you had 2000 customers that you work with in the past and you wanted to run a lead ad for an annual maintenance program to those customers, you could upload the file, get that customer list, and then run an ad directly to that list. The match rate on consumer files is usually about 80%. Uh, on business to business files, it could be as low as 30%, meaning we have a business email address versus a consumer email address. Um, but the more information you put in, the better the chance Facebook has to match. Facebook will put this onto your account as a, a, a new audience. You would name that audience and it would be located in your audience. So you would name that, you know, uh, John's Roofing website custom audience, for example. So that is a way to create an audience based on the data that you have. The next one is the Facebook pixel. Uh, I bring up this screenshot because there is a Google Chrome extension uh, that you can install on Google Chrome that will tell you if a page has a Facebook pixel. So you would just, any website you go to that would light up and say you have a pixel or it would not light up. Uh, so the Google Chrome is a really great browser to use. I would suggest looking at the various extensions they have. If you just did a Google search for Facebook Pixel Helper Google Chrome, that would come up. You install that. Anytime you go to any, any website at all, it will tell you if a pixel is installed on the website. So that, I just wanted to show you that for example purposes. 
when you install the pixel and we can't we can't dive super deep into this but um if you go to this section that had pixels and i had this in the initial part of the slides where it clicked on pixels if you clicked on pixel this is what would come up next so create a pixel for your site you're going to have the pixel name you're going to have the url um, in, in our case, we can create, we have, since we have a business manager and we're an agency, we can create multiple pixels. You would click, click create. You would want to create a custom audience based on website traffic. So we just looked at that uh, momentarily uh, back when we had custom audiences. So when we click on website traffic, we are now able to create an audience based on that pixel. So I know it sort of gets a little bit hairy here because you know, there, it's it's almost impossible to specifically show uh, the exact you know way that you would do this. But when you go into website traffic, you're going to be able to add in the pixels. So when you add people to your audience, you would put in how many website uh, all website visitors, and then it can go up to 180 days. So basically, what this is is you're going to put in an audience name, and it could be John's Roofing website audience you would want to target people that visit your website in the last 180 days and you want to put them into the audience. Now, it does so get a little bit deeper. automatically um, populates once the pixel is installed and once you set up the audience. That's exactly right. So there are some steps here. You would need to have your web developer or you would need to go into WordPress if you have access to it and install the pixel in the footer. Uh, I don't show the code here for that, but once you set that up, they will, it will give you directions uh, to, to do it. And then so you can do some other things with it. Yeah, and so we have a couple of questions here about the pixel and the installation of that. Sure. When you um, go through and, so there's two separate actions basically, Bill. Can you kind of go back into that? There's the sure. action of setting up the pixel in Facebook. Correct, and, and that would be here. A separate action of setting up an audience. Correct. So once, once, if, if I was to create a pixel right here, I would put, and, and I didn't do it because I didn't want to go through the process of creating another pixel for my company. But um, if I, if I cr hit create here, it would actually bring up another window where it would create that pixel, and it would say, "Here is the code for your pixel." have your web developer install it and there's several different steps of instructions that would be included with that yep. so when once you get that that code and that code is installed on your page the next step would be to go into audiences and say yes. now i want to create an audience of website traffic of people that are visiting my website when you click on that audience source right there for website traffic it would bring up this page and it, you would add people to your audience of people that are going to your website. And I usually change it to 180 days. In this case, it says all website visitors in the past 30 days uh, and, and that and then you would name it. Right. So it would give you no time for social Facebook custom audience or Facebook tracking audience. Yeah. Uh, make sure you've got the names down so you know what you're what you're looking at when you go into those audiences. So I, I know it's a little complicated, but f Facebook is becoming more and more complicated by the day. Uh, and then once you have this set up, there are other things that you can do where you see on the right, it says include more people, exclude people. So there are other different deep dive even further than this of ways that you can use this pixel audience to do other things, such as expand the audience out to different uh, ad additional people based on people that meet the criteria of the people that are already in that pixel so everything is sort of data intensive and it, it gets a little crazy okay one one other question about the pixels would you have a separate pixel pixel for each landing page or would you put it on the home page so you would install the pixel code on every single page um and then from there, if you wanted to target people that hit a specific landing page, you would create an audience for that particular page. So where this drop down says all website visitors, I believe if you did that drop down, you could put a specific page in there. So if you had a 
annual roof inspection page off of your website, notimeforsocial.com forward slash annual roof inspection, you could create a pixel audience that is that only hit that page. So that would be a way to, to just target those people that hit that page. Or you can put it on the in or on the home page of your site and then it'll traffic anybody who hits your home page. That's absolutely right. And and for roofing companies, we normally just look at it that way. There are we do for some of the companies that we do a lot of more deep end work. I believe we we in some cases we are setting up uh, audiences based on people that hit specific landing pages. And that yeah. certainly is an option. But obviously, yeah. you, no harm, no foul with creating an audience of everybody that hits their page and, and running yeah. an, an ad an yeah. ad to that audience. So I would say if, if you're on this call and we're getting into the deep dive for Facebook, start by creating a pixel for your home page and then installing it there. And then if you run a specific campaign, for example, Bill had a campaign where they ran about the a new roof they were giving away and they wanted people to vote. Mm -hmm. So they were driving them to a specific page. That's where you want to create a pixel specifically for a page, but in most cases, you're just gonna create this one pixel that goes on your homepage and then name that audience of website traffic on my, you know, whatever that domain is and yeah. begin to, that will automatically correlate. So Ashley asks, what is the pic purpose of the pixel or is it just to capture the data of the people visiting the website? So um, I can, why don't you answer that, Bill? Sure. So the purpose of the pixel is to set up an audience where you can retarget website visitors with ads on Facebook specifically. Yeah. So it's it's an audience of people that have visited your website. And here's the deal. Most people don't have tracking of people that visit their website. You may have 100 people come a day come to your website and they may do nothing. Well, you right now you can't there are ways within Google you can you can retarget them, but with the Facebook pixel, you're now gonna set up a pool of people that have hit your website. Now they're gonna be pixelated, meaning they're gonna have this, this pixel where you can now put them in an audience and when they're on Facebook, you can retarget them with an ad. Yep. So that is essentially how that circle is built. And it's beneficial because when you when you have a lead, or someone coming to your site or someone on Facebook that's checking you out, they see a post that leads to your website, it's valuable because you want to be able to quickly capture that lead and then re-engage with them as much as possible before they make their buying decision. So Correct. it's so important for you to be able to install this pixel and then retarget them immediately so that they make the next step which is calling you or pressing that contact button within Facebook to say hey you know what this is my third time seeing um, roofitright.com on the website let me go ahead and, and have them give me a call to give me a quote so that's why it's it's valuable yep. okay great great info great all right so we've now talked about your list of people that you've had we've we've now talked about targeting people that have hit your website. Now we're gonna jump into targeting people that have engaged with your content. So in this case, there's various options within the audience process. So this is, we're back to audiences and now creating a new audience, a custom audience. And this custom audience is based on engagement. So when we, I'm gonna pop back real quick just to show this. So the bottom one of engagement, when you click on engagement, you're going to go to this page. So now it's people that have engaged with your video. They've engaged with your lead form. We saw the Roof Pros lead form. So you can re you can set up an audience of people that have engaged with those lead ads and maybe they did not submit the lead. You wanna retarget them. Uh, we'll skip full screen experience, Facebook page, people that have actually interacted with your page, uh, your Instagram business profile, and then events. So you can now set up audiences and let's say you had a video going of customer testimonials and you know you ran an ad that hit 10,000 people with that testimonial and it was a 60 second video if 2,000 people watch that video all the way to 100% meaning they watch 60 seconds of the video and the video is 60 seconds long you've now had somebody engage with that video where they were they were interested enough that they watched the whole thing well, you can now take a subset of people that watch the video and say, 
I want to target the 2,000 people that watch this to 100% and create a brand new audience of these individuals. And that's sort of part of that funnel, right? So we now have customer engagement and now we're moving into like that secondary piece of the funnel where you're now trying to get them to do something else. So the, the video views is a really cool tool that we use, uh, lead forms, Facebook page and events. So so Bill, this this is people that are actually on the contractors page or have engaged with one of their posts. In some engage sort of with way. something. That's correct. So okay. so we're yep. So in okay. this case, it's another sort of engagement tool. So we haven't really touched on the cold audience yet, meaning people you don't know at all. These are the first three audiences we've looked at have either they're either in your list or they've been to your website or they've engaged with your content. So those are the three so far that we've talked about. So you can see how it gets a little bit complicated because if you've got all these different audiences, you have to manage them, you have to understand what's going on with each of them, you sort of have to have a plan in place. And that's that's a, that's an important thing to be thinking about as you're, as you're going through and setting up all these ads. Mm -hmm. So the, the next one, I, I, I know we may be starting to get a little pressed for time, but uh, the next one I wanna talk about is the cold audience. So this is the area where you would click saved audience. I wanna create a saved audience, and this is people that don't know you at all, right? So if you click on saved audience within Facebook, the first thing that's gonna pop up is this page. And you can see on the top right of that audience, it says potential reach of 230 million people. That's the entire audience in the United States between 18 and 65 plus that you potentially could target. You could actually drop that age down to 14 and it would add a few more in. Um, the saved audiences on Facebook are really to start to narrow down a geographic audience of people that you would wanna force feed content to, meaning they don't know you, you don't know them, but you wanna target them with an ad. So, and, and then as you target them with an ad in the saved audience and they start to get into one of the other audiences we've talked about, they're now sort of a captured audience, but this is a cold audience. This is somebody that you've, you've really never talked to before. And the demographics on this, especially for roofing companies is gonna be super important, especially geography. Uh, if, if, if any of you guys work hailstorms, you'll know, I. I I've spent many, many years, you know, creating hail swaths and 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 marketing hail data. Uh, we're going to look at some really cool things here in a minute. So this is what you would see when you first clicked on that saved audience. And now we're going to get into what happens when you narrow that location down. The one thing I want to point out about this is if you see the second arrow down, it says one mile. So this is actually my location in Round Rock which uh, our office is at 1311 Chisholm Trail. And I've narrowed that, that geographic location down to one mile. And it says my potential reach is 22,000 people. So if I wanted to run an ad to this 22,000 people, I would create this audience. I would name it No Time for Social One Mile. And that would be people one mile around my location. So the Bill, a, a good use case for this is when a contractor, if you're doing a job, for example, in Fairburn, Georgia, which is a suburb, and you have the address of the job you did it in, you can yep. put that address in here and literally target that neighborhood and, and or the surrounding neighborhoods or be, be really specific with that ad, right? Absolutely. And we're going to look at how to even narrow it down further than one mile here in a minute. Um, okay. And that is the big difference between the boost post and using business manager and the audience manager to manage. Boost post will only narrow your audience down to 10 miles. Mm -hmm. So you lose all of that ability to geographically target. Yep. So we're gonna we're gonna now now that we've narrowed it down to one mile, let's let's go back out a little bit. Um, we're now going to look at Pflugerville, Texas. So if I wanted to just target Pflugerville, Texas, you can see my drop down there specifically states Pflugerville. Your audience location has been changed from United States to Pflugerville. So if I wanted to target everyone in the, who live in the location of Pflugerville in that city, I would be able to reach 34,000 people on Facebook. So that's just a, a different way to sort of look at if you wanted to just target a, a, a city and you said, residents of Pflugerville, right? You know that that ad is gonna be run to that, that saved audience of Pflugerville. So now you can, you can feel confident about you know, running an ad with the term Pflugerville. If we go back to my Orlando example, right? 
they what they should have done is set up a saved audience with Orlando and run the ad to Orlando. Yeah. Uh, this is this is if I was to take the center of Pflugerville and just do five miles around. So the difference here, and I'm going to go back real quick, is that audience potential reach was 34,000. You can see because I'm in a suburb of Austin, as soon as I increase that audience around the same location to five miles around, I now pick up another 100 and almost 105,000 people to target. So if you have a large area that you want to target, and this would be mainly used for branding purposes, right? So if you want to brand your company, let's say you were thinking about, well, I want to send out a postcard mailer, and instead of running a postcard mailer to 140,000 people, I'm going to run Facebook ads, and, and that ad spend will probably be about one-fifth of what it would take to run a postcard mailer. You now can run that to an audience of 140,000 people. And there are other ways to narrow this audience down. So you can see in this case, I've got 18 to 65. Uh, you know, homeowners may be in their 30s. So if you if you bump that up to 30, that audience may drop down to 100,000. Um, now I want to get into the example uh, that Tiara was talking about, where if we look at this reach of 140,000, and now let's go on to the next slide, which is going to show you exclusion exclusionary audiences. So you can see the first little pin drop there in blue is the five mile audience, which was originally 140,000. If I, if I take the, if I use the drop down for exclude, you can see it's sort of that red X underneath the two other red X's. You can actually exclude audiences by putting in pins to exclude people. You can see my potential reach is now back down to 38,000. So Bill, there, mm -hmm. just to clarify this, how easy is it to excluded audience or identify audience because you have it here on the screen but are you literally dropping a pin on that map are you i, I am dropping a pin so with the on the bottom right there it says drop pin and it's got the little red x i i click on that and it allows me to just move my mouse around and drop a pin you right. sort of got to get a little bit crafty with it because if you're using radiuses, right, you almost have to think if I drop this pin here and the radius is, in this case, I have three mile radiuses, if it's a mile, but once you begin to play around with it, you sort of get, you know, it, you, you get a feel for how you can include and exclude audiences. And that's where the neighborhood thing comes down, right? Where if you're running ads to say neighbors in this neighborhood, right? For example, there's one north of me called Terra Vista with, with like 1,500 homes. So I can actually go in and, and create an inclusionary and an exclusionary audience that encompasses all of the homes in Terra Vista. It would be nice if Facebook allowed you to upload like a, a KML file or a GIS file where they would map that out. I would venture to say sometime in the next five years they may do that, but for right now we're stuck with radiuses. So you can go in and, and create these inclusionary and exclusionary audiences and it's pretty, pretty fun. Yeah. So one of our contractors, John said, you know, so a hailstorm hits and you can actually advertise by street via Facebook and then be able to link that with your Eagle View report on the job site. You know, like you can get very that, specific. Very specific, very creative and, very and creative. have some fun with it. There yeah. there absolutely are ways to do that. Um you you just gotta it it you know you gotta get in there and you gotta do it and it takes a little time. But uh, yeah. certainly yeah and, and and also down here on the right hand panel it says estimated daily results so that mm -hmm. kind of gives you a skew for okay here's how much of you know reach you can hit based on how much you spend right correct so spend does have a lot to do with this um in this case i i don't have the spend listed on here um i think facebook may pre pre-fill that with an amount mm -hmm. um but one thing I would like to point out, and I'm glad you mentioned this, and, and again, it does, we could spend four hours on a webinar here and, and mm -hmm. talk through all this stuff. It, it would be an all-day thing. Uh, there There is a, a daily spend amount and a lifetime spend. I do like to tell people to use lifetime spend and set up a range of dates that you want to have that ad run, Facebook will run that ad spend effectively over that period of time. So if you ran an ad for two weeks at $300, Facebook's going to know when people are on and off Facebook to be able to run that, that effectively. If you ran an ad for 14 days at $25 a day, 
you're forcing Facebook to spend $25 a day. So we like to use lifetime ad spend. It's just a preference and a suggestion. And, and really we work, we have a Facebook partner manager that we work with and, and that's been his suggestion as well. Yeah. So good, good point on that, on, on how much reach you can get. So just to give you guys a quick time check, we're at 10.56 Eastern. We're going to go to about 11.15 so that um, give Bill a little bit more space. So if you're able to stay on um, to 11.15, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have a hard stop at, at that time. Oh, All right? thank you, TR. Of course. Great. So, yeah, so, so now we've, we've sort of talked about the, the various audiences and, and I think it's important to sort of remember how all this ties into sort of that funnel process. So we talked about people that visit that, that you've got lists for. So you could set up an audience of people that you've got lists. You've got people that you're retargeting from visiting your website. Uh, you've got people that you're retargeting based on the content that they've interacted with. And now you've got this cold audience that you want to run ads to. So all of that kind of tied together, you could be looking at 15, 20, 25 different audiences, depending on how complex and complicated you want to get it. So mm -hmm. how does all this fit together? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to bring up the, the customer acquisition funnel again, just to sort of you know, we talked through all the ads and running it. What does that really look like? So starting from the top, brand new social audiences. Those would be the saved audiences of people that have never interacted with your content before. Yeah. That's what we just talked about. The CRM leads, those are people that are your customers. So you can upload those leads into Facebook. Uh, it could be leads, it could be prior customers. There's different things you can do with those when you get them in there. Canvasser areas, obviously, if you're using some type of tool like, uh, you know, like uh, SalesRabbit, for example, SalesRabbit is a great tool. Uh, all of that information could be combined together to begin to run these brand awareness ads to get people to interact with your content. So mm -hmm. what happens next? Well, now we're going to start creating some other audiences. Yeah. Is there a question? Yeah, there is. We have a couple okay. of questions, and I just wanted sure. to say, you know, we're through the the most of the meat of the webinar, but there are some really good questions coming in. So if you have a Excellent. question, go ahead and put it in now, and then we'll be putting those in the queue to ask Bill so that we, we can Excellent. definitely get your questions within the next 10 to 15 minutes. Also, um, there's a lot of questions coming in about spend, right, Bill? How yep. much spend sure. is recommended based on the funnel with the different ads? Um, cold calling, how does all of that work together and how does Facebook really help to determine, you know, how much spend is, is re required versus yep. what's recommended. So I guess, you know, a lot of our contractors are looking to you for a recommended spend sure. to perhaps start with. Sure, sure. Great, really great question. Um, so what, what I like to say is ad spend is 100% based on the audience size. And the easiest, I guess the easiest way I like to equate that, especially in the roofing industry, is if you were to mail 5,000 postcards, 50,000 postcards, or 100,000 postcards, think of the, the 5,000, 50,000, 100,000 as your potential audience on Facebook. So if you create an audience based off of people that are your prior customers and you have 10,000 customers and let's say 8,000 of them have a match, you need to set the the, the the budget based on that audience. The same thing with the cold audience, right? We saw that Pflugerville was 140,000 and I mentioned that example of 140,000 postcards versus running ads. Traditionally, depending on the type of ad that you run, it will cost you anywhere from three to $5 on the low end all the way up to $20 to $40 on the high end for an ad to reach 1,000 people. So if we if we were on the high end, if we had, let's say we'll use a, a you know 10,000 for example, right, mm -hmm. as, as an audience. If it costs us $10 to reach 10,000 people, or a thousand, if, I'm sorry, if we were trying to reach 10,000 people with an ad and the cost to reach 1,000 people was $10, it would cost me $100 an ad spend to have that ad potentially reach 10,000 people. 
And if you if you went up to a hundred dollars, right? You're now talking about um, I'm sorry. If you went up to a hundred thousand people, you're now talking about a thousand dollars. So, Bill, so, most people, you know, get. I guess the one of the the things is in Facebook. Will they show you? Okay, at the spin level, how much reach you're going to have based on spin? Will yes. They, so that's that's in this area here. So I just went back off the to the saved audience. So when you set up the audiences and the ads, they will begin to tell you when you're creating an ad how many people potentially will be reached and what those results will look like. And you can actually go in and say, if I spend a hundred dollars lifetime, those numbers will begin to change. If you move it from a hundred to a thousand, those numbers will begin to change. There is a point where obviously you you can try to force feed ad spend and say, I want to spend five thousand dollars to reach, you know, these this very small area. Facebook will in quote throttle an ad if you overspend, meaning your frequency of that ad hitting that that consumer is too high or they start getting negative feedback. Negative feedback would be somebody clicking on the top three dots on your ad, which honestly, I don't know if half if if five percent of the country even know that exists, but you could click on an ad and say, why am I seeing this ad or hide this ad because I'm seeing it too much. I don't think many people do it, but it is an option out there. So the ad spend is something that is is sort of a a a a big a big thing to tackle. But mm -hmm. I would say if you take anything out of this, it would be reaching people anywhere from five dollars all the way up to forty dollars to reach a thousand people. And then when you when you start to see this potential reach, you can almost put a spreadsheet together and say if it's five dollars to reach a thousand at the low end or forty dollars to reach a thousand at the high end, just do thirty eight times five or thirty eight times forty, and then you would sort of get a range of what it would take to reach that audience. Um, yeah. You may want to reach them more than once, which means you want to double up that ad spend. That is a whole other creature in itself, and it's something that even we're having to play with and toy with over time as we begin to build ads. Yeah, I would definitely it, say continue to just get mm -hmm. in here, build, start building and saving audiences. And, you know, I mean, Bill, you will probably agree. It's something that you kind of have to touch, you know, and go back to to tweet. Yep. Um, to make sure your spend is is being effectively used against where you know the audience and tweaking your audience and then tweaking the spend and you know oh, go, to make sure that you know you are really leveraging and getting the right leads. But absolutely. you know, Facebook again, not to scare you from doing it. I think Facebook is really helpful in that. They're going to walk you through on the right hand side. They're going to say, hey, here's the audience size we got now. We're up to 38,000 people. And that means 7,000 to 25,000 can be reached per day. You know, and then they'll go under there and say, you'll have a little bar where you can increase or deduct the spin. And they'll actually, these numbers on the right hand side will continue to change. So you yep. can see you know, where you're at and start what yeah. you're comfortable with and, you know, put, you know, a hundred dollars into an audience and try it, you know, or put 200 bucks into an audience and try it and, and then grow, grow from there. You may yeah. even decide, you know, one of the, I heard a contractor say recently that he doesn't do any print spend anymore. He just doesn't do newspapers. He doesn't do anything print. It's all digital. So you may take wow. your spin yeah. from one bucket and move it to Facebook or Instagram or what what have you. So play with it and don't be afraid to to dive in there and let Facebook help you. Yeah, good point. And it you know it it is sort of a working thing that you sort of have to go through for for you Gary Vaynerchuk fans and and I've been watching him since for probably ten years now and then a lot of people know his name from the industry and some of the events that he was at a couple of years ago, uh, some of the industry events. Um, he he will st continue to harp on the fact that Facebook, if done right, is still the lowest cost medium to reach an individual in in any type of advertising. So. Um, you, 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 the opportunities there, but you can see the complexity of having to put all these processes together. And it, and it is something that, you know, if you put some time into it, you'll, you'll learn it and you'll begin to understand it. And so. I would say definitely reach out to Bill. 
to, you know, ask him those hard questions, get his feedback, you know, utilize their services to maybe even get you up and going so to get you started and get your momentum built, you know, for your sure. campaign. And, and they're, they're very insightful, obviously, in, in this regard and can, can offer a lot of value. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, so going back to the acquisition funnel, um, you know, we to 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 kind of harp on the audiences, you can see where I won't go through this whole thing again, but you can see where all of these audiences begin to fit in, right? Watch a video, retargeting ads, website visit, retargeting ads, engaging with your pages, retargeting ads, and then pushing people to blogs, downloads, subscribing to a newsletter, and then I email follow up. Uh, it, it's complex. There's a lot of audiences involved, but if you map this out, if you do it the way that it needs to be done and you say, you know what, we're all in on digital, uh, it, it does work. We have several clients, not only in roofing, but in various other industries that have been very successful utilizing, uh, this process before. So I would, I would highly encourage it. Um. And I think, do we, do you send out the slides, uh, Tiara, to, to end, all the attendees? Yep. Okay, great. So, so you'll I, get a PDF of this. Yeah, and I put a, a note in um, in the chat to you all that you can be sure to check out the slides on our Asphalt Life uh, blog. Great, so. great. So now we're just going to go through sort of the next steps for success, and then we can finalize things with uh, any other questions you have. So first one is set up business manager. Uh, like I mentioned, that's required now to upload your custom audiences. Visit business.facebook.com to start that process. You want to set up your Facebook advertising account in Business Manager and then create that Facebook pixel to add to your website. That was that screenshot where I had the highlighted things within Business Manager. Add the Facebook pixel code to your website. Ensure that you have some type of email program in place. We recommend MailChimp, and then maybe for a more complex solution, what we have for our clients is something called Active Campaign, and it allows you to do a whole lot of really cool things. Create all your audiences. So now we've got, we went through all the audiences today, right? Facebook, Facebook Pixel, upload your customers, the saved audiences, all the various audiences that you wanna potentially target and begin to map those out in some type of process, whether it's on a whiteboard or however you guys want to do it. Create the assets. So you need ads, you need potential downloads, you need website blogs, you need these landing pages in order to be begin building this customer acquisition funnel. So that's a, that's a process that needs to happen within your company in order to begin utilizing these digital marketing tools effectively. Next would be map out your specific customer acquisition funnel with timeframes. That's normally a 30 to 90 day process, uh, meaning you're starting to run ads and then you're getting people to finally make a decision. Then that's that new acquisition funnel process. And then develop reporting to track your funnels and efforts. That should include specific tracking numbers on your ads. So that's something that we use. We have, we use a product and it's a little bit complex, but again, it, with a little training, you can use it. Uh, there's two out there we use. One is called uh, Twilio. That would be the more complex process for buying phone numbers. It's a dollar a month for a phone number. The other one is called Call Rail. And Call Rail is another way that you could set up tracking phone numbers and have all kinds of different numbers in your ads. I would recommend tracking numbers on everything you do, whether it's uh, your website, uh, postcards, any kind of marketing material. I mean, heck, you can even have sales reps with their own tracking phone numbers. At a dollar a month, you should be able to have 40 or 50 different numbers for your company and be able to track everything happening. That may be a little over the top, but that would be an extreme example of utilizing tracking phone numbers with everything you're doing within your company. Uh, and then work and rework the process, depending on your audiences, the budget, your success over time. Uh, it really sort of comes full circle at that point of, building the acquisition funnel, utilizing the audiences, and making sure that you've got the processes in place to make it happen. So what is a tool you can use? One of the things that we often will not require, but we recommend our customers and potential customers to do is a digital marketing team audit. And really the first four are probably the most important. The, the last four are important, but uh, probably not as important as the first four. So we talked about the conversion funnel. We talked about the content marketing, and we've actually got a tool. I'll show you the, the website for that tool next. Uh, paid customer acquisition. So that's Facebook ads, Google ads, and then email marketing. 
if you had those four solid, and what I like everybody to do is write the name in in that empty box of who's handling that for your company, and then score them on a score on a scale of one to ten. One is we're not doing anything. Ten is we've got this down pat. Uh, if you were doing all eight of them, we would want to come up with a final score for everything, right? So social and community management is who's out there running and managing all your social, any kind of community management going on digitally. Search marketing is obviously people that are searching. So that would be Google and any other type of search marketing. Uh, analytics and data science really just goes back to reporting. And then testing and the conversion rate optimization is the funnel that you're using is it converting? So being able to use reporting to figure out, we had somebody come in and they ended up becoming a customer. So again, complex digital marketing, I think is a lot more complex than people really mm -hmm. feel like it should be or could be, uh, but it is its own business now. And uh, it's it's pretty, pretty interesting. So I would, you know, do this for your company, at least the first four and figure out where you're at and then put a plan together to say, how are we going to get to become 10 by like, you know, January of 2020. And if you put a plan in place and you make that happen, I think great things will happen for, for every one of your businesses. That's awesome. Cool. So, so um, we, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, questions. Yeah, let me go back and then let's get to some questions before we go to the additional resources. Well, no, they were just random questions. So why don't you go ahead and give them the resources and then we'll sure. ask questions. Excellent. So we have a couple uh, resources out there. One of them is a uh, course called this one called Facebook Basics and one called Facebook Marketing for Roofers on the left hand side. Uh, that's actually at our website, trainmeonsocial.com. Uh, I, I usually will offer an hour to an hour and a half of free consulting with a screen share after the course is fully completed uh, on the on the on the paid course. So the, the basics is just a 30 minute class. We'll just go through and show you some cool things to do uh, it cover a couple of things that we talked about today. Facebook marketing for roofers is a deep dive. Some of the class material is from 2016, so there are some outdated things in there, which is why I do like to offer the hour and hour and a half, but a lot of the information in that class is still relevant to beginning to build your digital marketing. So it goes a lot deeper into what we talked about today and goes through a lot of the specific things that you would need in order to be successful. Uh, okay. The other one is Social Media Stockpile. So Social Media Stockpile is a monthly content bank. So if you're a marketer, if you're a roofer or you have somebody in your marketing department that is struggling creating content, we give you anywhere from 18 to 22 posts that are created with videos, with graphics that you can use for your company on a monthly basis. Uh, we also include two to three newsletters and two to three blogs that are branded for that particular month. And all of that content comes to you in a marketing package every month. We also offer our bird eye review management tool as part of that. Uh, so sms.notimeforsocial.com is our social media stockpile. And that is uh, a, a reasonable cost. In fact, I think we even have some better pricing that with them what's on the website right now. So if you want to reach out to me, my contact information is coming up and we'll leave that slide. Uh, I'll actually, we're going to go into Q&A now, but I'll just leave this slide up for you guys yep. to, to take a look at. Perfect. So I'm just going to um, shoot out a couple of last questions. I know we said we would have a hard stop at 1115, but if you guys, uh, I want to be able to prioritize your questions um, since you guys took the time to be on the webinar today. So we're going to hit the questions that you have in here. Once we've answered yours, if you want to jump off, feel free to. Um, for those of you that have to go, thanks so much for joining the webinar. I did yes, put thank you so much. a link throughout the um, chat that are resources that are call, call outs to what Bill was referencing. So be sure to check those links out and you can definitely log into Asphalt Life at um, atlasroofing.com forward slash Asphalt Life. And the podcast or this webinar will be up tomorrow um, on there for you guys to check out as well. So Excellent. on to questions, Bill. Um, the first one is about fake ads and is that a concern? um on social media and then this um so i'll let you answer that and then there's a part two to that sure <clears throat> so i i think there is a, a tiny bit of a concern but i wouldn't necessarily 
I, I wouldn't necessarily be worried about it. I think there were more issues on the political side of the world going on with Facebook ads and fake ads. Um, <clears throat> I will tell you, though, that we did come across an ad the other day that a sort of like, I, and I, I don't want to disparage the company, but the name I can't get down right now, but it was similar to like a Valpac type company that actually was running an ad for one of our clients that had a roofer that was not tied down and they actually ran that ad as a sponsored ad on Facebook through their page without our client's permission. That obviously is an issue. So, and, and that type of ad should never get put through without Facebook looking at it. So we are looking into that. Uh, there are obviously as the scale of this, this product uh, has reached 2.5 billion people uh, worldwide. Obviously, there's going to be some scam artists out there. Sure. Uh, I would say concentrate on what you're good at, meaning if you use the tools in here and you use them properly, I, I would not worry about fake ads running unless you can find ads that are running for your company from another company like we ran into. Yeah, and then definitely report those, which you can do right there in Facebook. Yes. Um, the next question is about Bitly. Do you recommend Bitly for links um, front within a post, or do you the shortened links, or do you recommend you know just popping in the URL direct from whatever your blog site is or whatever you're linking them to? I, I do recommend Bitly. We actually have uh, a Bitly account, and we use Bitly for links for our clients. So I, I don't think Facebook disparages Bitly links uh, within content or within ads. Uh, they may, I, I can tell you that one thing I would like to see you do if you are, if we're on the link question now is if instead of linking to a YouTube video, upload native video versus a YouTube link, that may be where links get a little bit uh, questionable in that Facebook and Google, which owns YouTube are, you know, they're not, they're not the best of friends. So mm -hmm. I would say uh, if you're going to upload a video, upload it natively to Facebook versus posting a YouTube link. Okay. Um, what about spin for a going back to the spin conversation, which yes, you know, is a big deal for a startup company. You're just trying to get a cold audience started. You mm -hmm. know, where do where do they start? How much would you say if if it was your client? You know, here's sure. where we're going to start with financially. If you were if if you had you know, if you were looking at just coming up with some kind of budget where you could start putting money into Facebook ads and you were utilizing a couple of the audiences, I would say minimum $300 a month all the way up to maybe five to 700 as sort of a starting point for getting ads promoted to various audiences. You need to be a little careful in that, um, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're not spreading that money too thin by having multiple ads running. So I would say maybe set up a systematic process to say, we're going to run ads to our current clients with a list. And if, you, if you're just a startup, you may have to, let's, let's go that route. If you're just a startup, run it to a saved audience and make sure the saved audience is not so large that the ad budget is not enough to reach them. And that's sort of where that, 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 idea of setting up a spreadsheet saying it costs anywhere from five to you know 20 or 40 dollars to reach a thousand people if your audience is a million people you're, you 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 have you better have the ad spend to try to reach that if right. your audience is ten thousand people you could do much more with that five hundred dollars than you know than a million so mm -hmm. a lot of it's based on audience and where you're at if you're in yeah. dallas fort worth holy cow that's a big audience yeah. But if you're in a small town that has 200,000 people, you could probably begin to work with five to $700. Right. And, and be sure to rely on Facebook to look at the reach because they're going to help walk you through how many Correct. people you can reach for that, against that amount of spend. All Correct. right. So Correct. the next question is, um, going back to the saved audiences, what is the least amount of info that the CSV file upload will require? Um, I think they will allow you to upload a hundred contacts. The well, no, in terms of oh. contact information. So, is it name and email? Oh, um, yeah. I, I think if you get into just putting first and last name, you may run into some issues, right? Because that's going to be too common. But right. um, I would say you would want uh, at least a first and last name and a phone number, or first and last name and an email. 
So email and phone number are going to be the two critical things. And, and I know roofers are now doing a lot better at getting email addresses. I would almost say if you're not getting email addresses for your clients, make that an immediate uh, process implementation for your company. Yeah. Uh, and if you're not using a CRM, definitely begin looking at CRMs, which we have a couple of Catalyst Group members, Job Nimbus and AccuLinks that are, uh, that are available to chat with you guys if needed. Yep. So um, then my last question is about um, boost post and save audience. So the diff, can you go back through briefly, just the high level on really what you're, why you're recommending these folks set up the business pay, you know, account for mm -hmm. the ad spend and what's the difference between that um, and a boosted post, which is right there in their timeline, they just hit boost post. Sure. So the difference between the two is your ability to do a lot more with when you're not using a boost post. So I would say the one critical thing is boost posts will only narrow your audience down geographically down to 10 miles. So if I was to if I was to put an audience in Round Rock where I live and I go to 10 miles, I believe that the audience would go up to about 500,000 people because I'm starting to get into Austin a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I don't have the ability right now to use all of the tools available within Facebook, within the audience section with Boost Post. Now, there are some creative ways if you set up the audiences that you can run a Boost Post to an audience, but it does get a little complex. So I'm not saying Boost Posts are 100% banned from our company, but if we're using them, we must have a specific audience set up that we're running that boost post to. Um, so the, the 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 other reason you would want to get a, you would want to use Business Manager is if you're running a boost post and you never set up anything within Business Manager, you won't be able to upload your audience. So you won't be able to use that custom audience option. So the 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 business manager is really just the preferred and best methodology in order to properly run ads on Facebook. So I would say there's a it, it, boost post is not an improper way to run ads. You just lose like 80% of the abilities within the Facebook ads platform if you're just using boost. Okay, great. Um, all right. So um, if, if I did not get to your question, I apologize. I know that most of you guys have hopefully had most of your questions answered. Be sure to reach out to Bill. I'm sure he will be more than happy to follow up for any follow ups. Just mention this webinar and um, he'll give you guys some time to just kind of have a one on one follow up quickly to answer any additional questions that we didn't get answered on this webinar. But Bill, um, once again, thank you so much for you. just your investment of time. And I think, you know, this information was golden. So thanks again. Oh, I enjoy, I enjoy talking about it. So I hope to see uh, some of the attendees out at some of the events that, that we attend and uh, yeah. look forward to uh, chatting with anybody that wants to follow up. All right, guys. Well, hey, we will talk to you soon. Be sure to send us questions and complete the um, online survey. And don't forget, live, roof, play together. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.